Today we're going to talk about network compliance and how we can create an easy to configure dashboard using dynamic documentation. Dynamic documentation is referring to using Ansible facts to gather facts about devices, or in this case, network devices, as well as the network resource modules and the ability to um, collect their configurations, their scope configurations. Um, the other um, component of this is using a, a Jinja 2 template um, that's for HTML so that we can easily create the main web page for the dashboard and then create additional um, frames and drop down um, menus that you can customize to your liking by using easy to follow examples that we'll present in this demonstration. All right, here's the backdrop for our demo for the compliance dashboard. Basically, we're going to configure some devices, some multi vendor devices, Cisco, Arista, and Juniper. We're going to collect facts as well as resource facts, and we'll talk about the differences of those two here in a moment. We're going to create a scheduler so that we periodically go out to those devices, and as we gather the configuration and operational state in the dashboard, if anything is out of compliance, and we see it highlighted in red, then that's bad. So don't tell my manager. Okay, let's talk about the network facts. The way that the network facts work is that each of the vendor devices, whether it be Cisco, Arista, or Juniper, uh, we can take a look at that native configuration, in this case iOS, EOS, or Junos, and by gathering the network facts, we can convert that to structured data. In this case, you can see that it's in um, JSON format. So this creates a machine-readable um, representation of the configuration that we can use these built-in variables called magic variables that give us access to those values. And from that, we can create logic for our playbooks, or in this case, to use to populate our dashboard. Okay, let's look at an example of Cisco iOS underscore facts module. Um, by default, it's set to the minimum. That would be the equivalent of a show version from a command line on the Cisco router. Uh, we could also set explicitly hardware, config, or interfaces. Config would be the same as a show version. Um, all would select all of these, or the exclamation point would be a condition if we wanted to filter one or more of these from gather subset. Another option that we have within the network facts module is to call the network resource modules. In this case, in the example, you can see that, um, again, we're pulling in um, gathering the native configuration from the network devices, and then from a resource module, we're converting a specific resource module that we've explicitly called out, in this case VLAN. So this is a VLAN configuration with VLAN-specific parameters. However, we have many other resource modules that I'll show you here as examples. So when setting the gather network resources parameter under iOS facts in this example, we have a lot to choose from because there are several network resource modules. We need to set at least one as a minimum under that parameter, or we can use all. And if we set all, then we get obviously all the network resource modules. Now keep in mind that these are loaded into memory and they're made available um, to our subsequent task in our playbook. Another thing to note is we can use, again, the exclamation point as a condition to filter um, something out in terms of one of the resource modules. These are the magic variables that Ansible returns for the facts. And if you want to look at the resource module facts, you would see that um, under the Ansible NetGather network resources. All right, time for some fun. Let's kick off our network compliance dashboard template. I went ahead and sped this up so we don't have to wait too long for it to go through these various roles. We can see the output, the structured data from some of the gathering facts that we're doing, scrolling across the screen. And um, at this point, we can take a look and examine at what has actually changed. The changes were mainly made around setting up our web server. If you already have a web server, there's no need to run all of these tasks. But in this case, I'm using um, this role to install the Nginx and to configure um, the templates. Um, you will have to update your templates to update your web page, so we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, this right here is the link. So this is the IP address so that I can access my dashboard. So that was a part of that task as well. Now looking at the dashboard, we can see that we do have a lot of items highlighted in red around the routers and the version of code. So I did that on purpose, um, made a mismatch so that way we can see that fail. 
Um, the other thing that we have is SNMP configurations and syslogging. So here the community of student one is correct, but our syslog server um, is not correct. So just scrolling down, we'll just take a look at some of the um, various devices. Router one is a Cisco, router two and four are Vista, and router three is a Juniper. Uh, from an OSPF perspective, each one of them needs to have OSPF enabled, and tunnel zero is the link that they use for their OSPF neighbor adjacencies. You can see that um, those neighbors should be true. And if not, then uh, we would have a problem, and then they, again, would be highlighted in red. And that would be an example of an operational state uh, versus um, some of the other configurations like the SNMP or um, logging. Those would be more of a configuration state from a compliance review. But Tony, your dashboard is so easy and amazing and impressive, but how did it work? I'm glad you asked. In my playbook, the first play calls or includes a role called facts. And that's obviously where we gather facts. <laughs> the second role is the um, build report container. If you already have a web server, again, um, really the only role that uh, or the task that you would be interested in is actually updating the templates. So we'll, we'll definitely focus in on that. In my case, I'm actually installing a container with Nginx for the purposes of this demonstration. Here's the path to my role facts with the task for the Cisco iOS. And as you can see here, we have the iOS underscore facts module. And for gather subset, we're only looking at the config from the network facts, which is the running config. And from the gather network resources, the default is all of them, unless we decide to filter some of them as a variable. And for comparisons purposes, since this is multi-vendor, this is the, the Juniper Junos configuration, which is very similar to the Cisco, as is the Arista. For the build report container role, it's important for us to understand the create HTML report using the Jinja2 template. So it starts with the report.j2 file. Um, all the other tests may vary depending on how your web server is set up. Again, we're using Nginx container for this particular demo. Now we'll really dig into the reverse engineering of the Jinja2 template. So this is the report um, template. But again, this link will be available to you to the repo, so you can go back through it at your own pace. So no worries in that regard. This is su super easy. Mark us how we sit, how we highlight those items that are out of compliance. So we can change the color here. Here, the Jinja2 will look a little bit more familiar for us network folk. We have a for loop that we're going to iterate through. So in our network group, which has the four um, routers, we're going to iterate through that. And our network resource modules have to be defined. So in this main frame, with the, um, the resource.j2 template, we're going to use the Ansible network facts to populate the table. The desired variables are very important to understand because when they are not met in that condition, that's when we highlight that element in red. So now we'll take a look at the other frames that have their own Jinja2 templates. So if we look at SNMP as an example, we can um, drill into that one so we can see what it looks like from a resource module perspective. So here we're iterating through our routers, or what we call network underscore switch, to the Ansible network resources, um, SNMP server, and then the community's parameter. And if our desired variable for the SNMP name doesn't match, then we're going to mark the SNMP in red. Okay, so here is in the role for the build report container where we're defining our compliance variables. So these are those desired variables, and we've set them um, incorrectly on purpose so that way we can mark some items in red for the dashboard. So now we're going to return to our job template, and we're going to edit it. Um, this time we're going to point to some variables in a role in my solutions folder that have the correct item. So when we rerun this, the, um, the markings will go away in our dashboard. We should have a fully compliant configuration. Okay, let's go ahead and kick off the template again and let it run. And this time again, we'll fast forward it.
now on the dashboard. Everything is looking good. Look at that. No red marks. It's looking pretty okay. Just one last thing. Let's go back to the job template and add our schedule. And we'll go ahead and give it a name called Dashboard. And then we can set it up to schedule um, indefinitely, or we can run it so many times. So we'll go ahead and run it um, every minute. And we'll run it 10 times just to show that it works. Now let's take a look at our job history and see how it's working. Thank you so much for watching this demo. I hope you enjoyed it. Please take a look at our repo as an example to reverse engineer your own custom dashboard as well as some of the other dashboard examples included with this demonstration as well. Take care and see you on the next demonstration.